everything, as they show in the movies, it rides, howling over the bridge and the box. At the same time, there is no visibility of the outside world. You have to press against the windshield. The turning radius for a car of this size and year of production is normal, but by today's times it is too big, more than 235 inches. The steering wheel on a stationary car has to be turned hard, strained, but everything is fine on the go, it is light, the only negative is that you have to catch backlashes. It's pretty nice to ride, there are four springs, a ship and a cube. But something all the same adds a slight discomfort. There is no anti-roll bar here, so it also sways left and right on bumps. There are cars that are strongly associated with law enforcement agencies, good or bad, you decide. But, as they say, you can't throw out the words from the song, and you need to know the history. There are controversial issues in this world, for example, what came first, an egg or a chicken? But no one will argue that our passenger car is, although strongly rethought, but a licensed copy of Ford. Which Ford exactly? The Ford Model B40A of 1934 was taken as a basis, and under an agreement with the Americans. But, as usual, not everything bourgeois is suitable for our Russian user. In general, it is beautiful, but rather weak. Our manufacturers did not begin to pull rubber, and they began to rethink the overseas car almost immediately. In 1935, a prototype was already ready, and on March 16, 1936, the first M1 came out of the gates of the Nizhny Novgorod automobile plant named after Molotov. M1, without gas. Molotovets the first, Molotov the first. Well, what about me if that was the case? The rebirth of an American into a Soviet was led by Andrei Alexandrovich Lipgard and his associates. The first thing he did was to radically redesign the suspension of the new car. Old Ford loved the transverse springs, but this is an anachronism. Here, as we have become accustomed to, for a long, so, they had to redo almost everything, the steering mechanism in particular. They also installed discs, stamped, and shock absorbers, human, normal, and not these incomprehensible, frictional ones. So, what else can I tell you about the changes that used to be Ford, and now it has become M1? The rear axle has also undergone changes in the mount, but conceptually remained the same as that of the Pope. Even the cardan shaft is located in the pipe. But in this design, it no longer carries such a load and does not act as a thrust as it does on a Ford, so it has become more reliable. The dimensions of Molotov I are about the same, length 182 inches, width 70 inches, height also 70 inches. And of course, if the suspension was shoveled, then the frame was changed accordingly. They strengthened it quite seriously, adding an X-shaped crosshair in the middle. The attachment points of the suspension itself have been changed, which is logical. The frame itself is stamped from 0.11 inch thick steel. Do you think this is all? Not. But first, let's enjoy the bodywork. It is wonderful. It is almost identical to the Ford one. But why change something? The body is all metal, four door. If overseas, it is called Ford or sedan. Everything is in fashion, a flat windshield, fenders flowing into wide running boards and back into fenders. There is a minimum of chromium here, it emphasizes the lines and does not attract a flock of magpies. At the stern lies a spare wheel in a case. Aesthetics of the 30s, as it should be. The wings of this machine are made using high-pressure injection molding technology. Joke! The wings of this machine are made using graphoplasty. What is this, roughly? First, a model is made of clay or wood in a reduced form, they look at it, and based on the conclusions, something is removed. As a result, such beauty is obtained. The roof here, by the way, is not iron, but dermantine. With large steel panels, at that time it was difficult, even for the Americans. The roof is painted in the color of the body. M1 quite deservedly became the most comfortable domestic car for that period. The designers did their best and achieved their goal. A completely closed body, not the one that Gaz A has. Full doors with opening windows and draft-free ventilation with four swivel windows. The rear windows are not on the doors, but on the windows. The interior has cloth upholstery throughout. 
I sit back, because respected people drove here, and not behind the wheel. Cars were not sold in private ownership, they could only be received as a reward for services to the motherland. The vent opens with a handle. There is also a window. There is more than enough space on top. You can ride in a papaka. There is no trunk, in our understanding, to which we are accustomed, but it is. Space behind the back. Newspaper. It's called Red Star, May 10, 1945. What did Comrade Stalin say here? I know the wolf habit of the Nazi bosses, I consider treaties and agreements an empty piece of paper. We have no reason to take their word for it. This is what was written. I didn't talk about the engine. Here, too, there is a difference from the Americans. In the prototype of this model, Ford, it is rigidly bolted to the frame, in our case, look, on pillows, because of this, less vibration is transmitted to the body. There are some improvements on this motor, but more on that later. The engine itself is a four-cylinder, not eight, and it is from the previous Gaz A model, but only subjected to serious refinement. Displacement is 200 cubic inches, maximum power is 50 horsepower at 2,800 rpm. The maximum torque is 167 newton meters at 1,300 rpm. Gaz M, this is the name of the engine installed on the M1. Gaz M immediately received three pumps that Gaz A did not have, water, oil, and gasoline. And if a gasoline pump appeared, it means that it became possible to move the tank from under the windshield to the stern. See how the pipe is going up? This is an echo of the past, a very interesting thing, thermosiphon cooling. What am I talking about? The fact that it is very difficult to overheat this engine. And what a grid! See those compressed slots? This is the driver's tuning of those times. Well, it's like the crumpled boots of demobilized people. Another important innovation, which I promised to tell you about earlier, this motor has a contact oil air filter, an improved Zenith-type carburetor with an economizer and an automatic air damper valve. A wonderful miracle, automatic ignition timing. It is not necessary to correct it from the passenger compartment with a lever, as before. What about the driver's seat? All the same. The same sofa that can be adjusted, but we will not, because it is bolted to the floor with nuts, which we will not unscrew. There is no heater, there is painted metal around, and it is practical. No need to look at this stove and at the handle from the Volga saddle. No, no need. This is tuning, but we are talking about a normal car. Glove box, with the sound of a mailbox. Ashtray, air conditioning, which allows you to slightly open the windshield. Now you won't find it. Have you seen what an elegant textured engraving on the mirror is here? By the way, here, too, the window opens with a handle. Well, isn't it a beauty? Also, also, all doors can be locked. The pedal assembly is not particularly enjoyable. Not for long-legged boys. Not for me. Ideally, the machine should be started using the pedal. And what about sun visors? Convenient, right? Two-inch gap, expanse. It was no coincidence that M1 got into the exposition of the Museum of the Federal Security Service. After all, brand new cars from Nizhny Novgorod immediately fell into the USSR Special Purpose Garage. The machines did not serve the first persons, of course, but the leaders of the party and the generals, for sure. I won't accelerate to 60 miles, after all, this is VDNKH, I can get a fine, there are cameras here. But in general, it can accelerate to 60, but it will take a very long time to do this. But up to 50, it will be able to, in 24 seconds. We must mention the expense, how can we not remember about it? 6.3 gallons for 60 miles. Gasoline with an octane rating of 59 to 65. Well, that is, whichever one you get.
M1, which began to be produced in 1936, was mass-produced until 1942. But even after being taken out of production, a certain number of cars were assembled from the remaining components. A total of 62,888 copies were made. But given that the lion's share of the cars went to the front and disappeared there, it's not difficult to imagine how many of them have survived to this day. In general, driving this car is quite pleasant, although not without drawbacks such as a little crampedness. I would say that it is atmospheric. Atmospheric, if you do not slow down. Although the brakes here are on all four wheels, which was very good at that time. The brakes themselves are mechanical and must be pressed from the heart. The box is three-speed, the second gear is long, like the history of the CPSU. But again, to change gears, you need to remove your foot to the side, because it does not fit. Before the start of the war, the M1 became the main passenger car everywhere, however, mostly in the cities. The car served in a taxi, medical services, there were even pickup trucks based on them. And of course, in law enforcement agencies, the police and the NKVD. Conspicuous, comfortable, always recognizable. For someone, a black raven, and for someone M1, as they say, to each his own. It all depends on what kind of associations one has with the motherland. Well, in the meantime, our hunt continues.